fast this time. Let's see. Sydney Browning. I don't think that citric acid, yeast, or sea salt would pop. So I'm going to say A, carbon dioxide. Final answer. Got that one, too, for $16,000. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Thursday Night at Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Well, tonight our bonus is at an amazing $2,050,000. We don't know how much longer this can go on. Really, every day it gets bigger and bigger. It's soon to burst, I'm sure. This is no chump change, you know. You could almost afford a studio apartment here in New York City with that. <laughs> and who knows what it will get you in Alpharetta, Georgia. How about two plantations and 500 acres? Something like that, right, Sydney? Maybe not quite. Anyway, Sydney Browning is back. Here he is from Alpharetta, Georgia, and it's nice to have you back. Well, you got hot last night. You ran it up to what, 32,000? Uh, I think 16. 16 going for 32,000 yeah, yeah. today. You know, I used to have a studio apartment in Manhattan. Really? Uh, it was 195 a month when I moved in. Yeah. And, uh, what oh, was that, in the 18th century? No, no, it was uh, 1977. No I was kidding. was a student at NYU, and I took Paul by there last night. I used to ten bar at the bar across the street, and they were buying us drinks. And, and uh, we met a lady who still lives there. said new apartments go for $3,000. A month. A month. Yeah. Well, that's what's happened to him. But what are you, Key? You're going to win $2,050,000, That's right? what I'm here for. It's yeah. my goal. And your buddy Paul, uh, these two guys were umpires in, uh, in what was the league, Sydney? Uh, we did several leagues, actually. We did summer leagues for the Big Ten. We did some semi-pro ball, mm -hmm. some colleges, uh, high school, American Legion. Um, you're better than average baseball. Everybody's at home cheering for you. Your wife, Alia. 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 And the two children, Layla and Benjamin. Yep. All right, good enough. They must be thrilled to death. You're back tonight. Uh, Layla's excited. Are you really in the hot seat, Dad? <laughs> she's four. Just had her fourth birthday. Sure. So she's not sure what it means, but it's fun. Well, it means $2,050,000 if you go all the way, okay? And if you want to practice our game, go to abc.com right now and log on to our enhanced TV game. Cindy has won $16,000 at this point. He's just six questions away from the $1 million level. And once he reaches the $32,000 level, he's guaranteed to leave you with at least that much money. Cindy, you have two lifelines left, 50-50, and you can phone a friend. Remember, Cindy, if you go all the way tonight, you'll leave here with $2,050,000. Ready to play? Audience ready? Let's go. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? Here we go. $32,000. What is the only U.S. state that touches two oceans? Alaska, Hawaii, Florida, California. California touches the Pacific. Hawaii's out in the middle of the Pacific. Florida touches the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico. So I would have to uh, deduce that Alaska touches both the Arctic and Pacific Oceans. So I'll go with A, Alaska. Final answer? Yes, sir. That's right. It's Alaska. He's won $32,000. He's just five away from the big jackpot now, going for $64,000. Here it is. Which of these icons has appeared continuously for the longest period of time in a TV ad campaign. Energizer Bunny, Maytag Repairman, Mr. Whipple, Dave Thomas. Well, Wendy's came around during my lifetime. So did the Energizer Bunny. I remember Mr. Whipple as a kid, but I believe it's B, Maytag Repairman. I believe it's uh, Gordon Jump plays the Maytag Repairman, and he was not the original. Tag repairman. 
Final answer. Yes. Well, you got it right for 64. That was terrific. All right, should you miss here, you'll lose 32,000. Well, let's take a look at it now. He's just four away from the $2,050,000 level. Here it is for $125,000. In Daniel Keyes' 1966 novel, Flowers for Algernon. Who is Algernon? A scientist, a janitor, a mouse, a computer. I knew the answer, this would be easy. They're always easy when you know the answer. Maybe there's somebody on your phone a friend list who's a well-read person. Uh, there is, and I think this might be the time to, uh, to utilize that. Because uh, anything else would be a guess. Um, so I am going to phone a friend. Who do you want to call? I'm going to call Mary. What does Mary do? Uh, Mary's an attorney in Decatur, Georgia, and uh, is in a book club with my wife. Oh, this is what we want. AT&T, bring us Mary, please. Hello? Hello, Mary. Yes. Hi, Regis Philbin calling from ABC who wants to be a millionaire. Hello, Mr. How Hilton. you doing? Fine. Good. We've got Sydney here and he's kind of hung up on a question worth $125,000. So we're calling you for a little help, okay? I will try. All right, he's going to read you a question and four possible answers and one of them's the right answer. All right. All right, Sydney, you've got 30 seconds. Good luck. Starting right now. In Daniel Key's 1966 novel, Flowers for Algernon, who is Algernon? Scientist, janitor, mouse, computer. You have 10 seconds. I think I can eliminate, it's either, it's either janitor or mouse. Okay, thanks. Thanks. No, it's either janitor or mouse, she said. Now, if you were to use the 50-50, it maybe might eliminate one of them and might give you a, a stronger sense. For some reason, I thought it was mouse. Uh, she narrowed it down for me. I think I need to use the 50-50. Computer, take away two of those wrong ones, please. You know, we don't set things up like this. All of these choices are predetermined no, I, in the I computer know, long know. before you come. that I will uh, take the sure $64,000 and say thank you very much. All right, you're going to walk with $64,000. Why don't we take a guess or why don't we see what it is, all right? The answer sure. was mouse. But Sydney, $64,000, come on. Nice having you here. Good luck to you. Bye-bye. Well, he was right. A fool and his money are soon parted. Sidney Browning heeded that old saying and goes home with 64000 It's not exactly $2,050,000, but I'll bet that goes a long way. All right, now let's meet 10 people who want their shot at the big prize, and they are Jim Britton, Butte, Montana. Steve Borenstein, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. John Wilkes, Independence, Missouri. Carl Holzheimer, Buffalo, Washington.
Tony Klopecki, Boise, Idaho. John Moore, Omaha, Nebraska. Greg Gibbs, Durham, North Carolina. Mark Bueller, San Francisco, California. Jane Schimpf, South Lyon, Michigan. And John Flood, Williston Park, New York. All right, if you want the big bucks, then you have to get up here. So here's the first fastest finger question. Here it comes. Put these TV series in the order they first debuted, starting with the earliest. Alf, Becker, Maud, Martin. Okay, time's up. Let's see that answer now in the correct order, starting with the earliest series, and it was Maud, and then Alf, and then Martin, and then Becker. All right, let's see who got it right. And then the fastest time the winner is, let's see, it's Carl Holzheimer. Right over here, Carl. Congratulations. Way to go. When we get back, Carl's going to go for the $2,050,000. All right. Carl Holzheimer. He's a teacher from uh, Seattle. Seattle area is really Bothell. It's a little suburb outside of uh, Just Seattle. Just north, yep. Welcome to the show, Carl. Thank you, Regis. How long have you been a teacher? Nine years. You enjoy it? I do. I love it. Yeah, I got the world's best job, maybe besides you. Well, your entire class is watching right now. Oh, they are right, so huh? excited. Are they? They are so excited. They did all kinds of stuff before I got, went uh, to prepare me. Like, and, how do they prepare you? Well, they told me what I should do if I got here. Um, they told me that if I drank all of the water really fast, that it would be funny. They're eighth graders, you know. <laughs> okay. So I'm not taking that advice. No, I understand. And you're accompanied by uh, Sister Karen. How you yes. doing, Karen? Good. Actually, he's got two other sisters as well, huh? Yeah. And is it true that once a year, four of you go off on your own and relive your childhood? <laughs> <laughs> we leave all our spouses and uh, other riffraff behind, and just four of us go away together. <laughs> you must really enjoy each other's company. <laughs> we do. Well, that's we do. nice. That's a nice uh, tradition. All right. Well, Carl, uh, you know about the rules around here. You yes, know sir. about the lifelines. You know how much money you're playing for. You know how the kids are watching right now and cheering for you. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with Carl Holzheimer. Okay. Boy, you can't slip up on these first five questions. Know. You know that, Carl. Okay, yeah. But here it is for $100. According to a common phrase, to get hitched means to do what? Get married, find a job, buy a horse, lose your head. Well, if you get hitched, you get married. Final answer. Yes, sir. You get married. You got that right for hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars, Carl. Which of the following tools is most useful for clearing snow from a driveway? Would it be a rake, a shovel, a pitchfork, a toothpick? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say be a shovel would be most useful. Yes, Carl. A shovel for two hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. A race that finishes in a tie for first place is commonly called what? Dry heat, dead giveaway, dead heat, presidency. This scared me. Um, I'm going to guess that it, I'm not going to guess, I'm going to say it's see the race ends in a dead heat. That's what it does, ends in a dead heat, you got 300. <laughs> Carl, going for $500. People in what profession are nicknamed frogmen? Puppeteers, high jumpers, Exterminators, underwater divers. Frogmen are D underwater divers. Final answer. Yes, sir. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> Going for one thousand. In a 1975 pop hit, Barry Manilow claims, "I write the songs that make the whole world what? Laugh, sing, dance, listen." Well, Barry writes the songs that make the whole world sing. Final answer. Yes, exactly right. That's what he does. $1,000. Up to $2,000. Take a look. Which of these words is not coupled with the word poison to make the name of a dangerous plant? Ivy, oak, sumac, Jasmine. Okay, I know there's poison ivy, and there's poison oak, and there's poison sumac, so I'm gonna say 
the word not coupled with the word poison is D, jasmine. Final answer, Carl? Final answer. Got it right for $2,000. going for four thousand dollars what company's longtime ad slogan is when you care enough to send the very best hallmark federal express ll bean sears roebuck i'm old enough to remember this uh, when you care enough to send the very best you're sending hallmark a final answer that's what you're sending hallmark four thousand All of a sudden, it's $8,000 on the line. Which of these major U.S. cities does not border the Atlantic Ocean? Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Portland, Maine. Charlotte, North Carolina. Charleston, South Carolina. <laughs> I teach geography. Um... <laughs> Carl, I know you know this. I, I, you know I know it, and there's there's one in there that's just throwing me a little bit. Now let's just talk about it, okay, okay. before you use the lifeline. And if you have to use the lifeline, of course, you're welcome to it. But Fort Lauderdale, Florida? I can't, re I can't remember which side of Florida Fort, Fort Lauderdale's on, if it's on the Gulf side or if it's on the uh, um, Atlantic side. Well. You know what, Regis? I think I'm... Give me a 50-50 on this. Really? I guess I have to. Well, you well, for it. Why do we do it? No, why do we do it? I hate to see anybody use their lifelines. Come on, let's do it. Computer, okay. take away two of those wrong answers. <laughs> okay. Did not border the Atlantic Ocean. Portland, Maine. One or of these Charlotte. Right. One Carolina. of these is inland. Bridges, so I'm going to go with C, Charlotte, North Carolina. Final answer? Yes. Yes, it's Charlotte, North Carolina. Whoa. When we come back, the teacher goes for 16,000. Carl Holtzheimer, this is the eighth grade out there in Battle, Washington. So you play me in the classroom because you use this format with your students. <laughs> I do. If we have a review for a test or something, I teach at Odell Middle School. I play Regis. They write the questions, uh, you know, starting with the easiest questions and going up. And I play Regis. We play in teams. And if I forget to say, is that your final answer, they go berserk and they make me throw the question out. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Making Regis adhere to the rules. Huh? Uh -huh. All right. Well, here's where you stand. You've got two lifelines left. You've got $8,000. We're going for 16, Carl. Seven away from the big payoff. Let's play. Here we go. For $16,000 in the 1999 movie The Green Mile, what does the title refer to? Escape tunnel, floor of death row, section of a highway, spiritual journey. I saw this movie. The answer is B, floor of death row. Final answer. Got it right for 16,000 dial. That's the Green Mile. Come on, Carl, one more for the 32, okay? Yep. Here it is. In World War II, what was the equivalent of the WAX or Women's Army Corps in the U.S. Navy? Was it the Waves, the Seabees, the Wasps, the Wafts? This seems too easy to me, so I'm trying to make sure that I know it. It, it, it was the WAX and the Waves. A. Final answer. Yes, it was the Waves. $32,000. Sometimes you can't believe your eyes, you know? I know. All right, five away now, Carl. Here it is for $64,000. All right. Before becoming an actor, Sean Connery competed professionally in what sport? Boxing, soccer, bodybuilding, rugby. Boy, we just one just jumped out at me, and I know that I've read this, but it's probably been years and years since I read this. I was a huge James Bond fan of the movies growing up. Uh-huh. So I know I read about Sean Connery. 
See, every time we get up above that $32,000 level, a little bit of self-doubt creeps in. I know. But you know what? I Gosh, I sure seem to be sure about this. Just looking over the answers again. I'm trying to think if anybody on my phone a friend would know this, and I honestly can't think of anyone that would that knows any more about early Sean Connery than I do. You know what, Regis? I'm going to trust myself on this one, and I'm going to go with a boxing. And that's going to be my final answer. You know, he was a bodybuilder that oh. needed for Mr. Olivia years ago. Cool. was bodybuilder. 32. 32,000. Not, Not bad. See what happens when I let you trust yourself? I know. I know. Good luck, Carl. Thank Thanks. Ah, too bad, huh? I said Mr. Olympia, I meant to say Mr. Universe. Sean Connery came in third in that contest in 1953. But hey, Carl goes home with $32,000, and I'll bet his class is very proud of him. Well, they should be. Now we have an empty hot seat, so here's the next fastest finger question. Take a look. Put these famous sea crafts in order of their maiden voyage, starting with the earliest. Mayflower, Santa Maria, Lusitania, Contiki. All right, the time's up. Let's see that answer now in the correct order, starting with the earliest sea craft, and of course the Santa Maria, then the Mayflower, then Lusitania, finally Contiki, who got it right in the fastest time. Let's see, the winner is John Wilkes. Yes, sir, John, now it's your turn. John Wilkes gonna go all the way and win this back. So it's John Wilkes in the hot seat. John is from Independence, Missouri, the home of uh, Harry Truman. That's right. Whose home is now a museum, as I understand it. Uh huh. Yeah. So what do you do there in Independence? I'm a meter reader for the city utility. You read the meters. Read water and electric meters. Aha! Uh -huh. You go to. Uh, Part of the house where the meter is? Yeah. Make Water's notes? usually in the front, the electric's usually in the back. How long have you been doing that? More than 20 years. 20 years? Mm hmm. What's the best part of meter reading? Uh, I like working outside. Mm -hmm. I don't have a boss looking over my shoulder. No supervision no. at all? Nope. You're out in the field by yourself. How many meters do you read a day? Mm. I, I read 8,500 in a month. No kidding. So, yeah, each day is a, not the same amount. Yeah. And what's the worst thing about your job? The dogs. They come after you. Yeah. yeah. They don't want you snooping around reading their meters. No, they don't. So, do you get bit? I've been bit so many times, I've lost count. You're kidding me. Nope. It's 20, but I'm not sure how many more than 20 is. Actually, come on up and bite you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't let them exactly come no. on up and bite me, but they bite me. And you're accompanied by uh, your wife, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. You have a job, too? Yes. What I, do you do? I clean houses for a living. All right, good. So, look. You know, you know what the prize is here. We got two million fifty thousand dollars. You know about the rules, and you know about the lifelines, John. So good luck to you. Let's get started, okay? With who wants to be a millionaire? Here we go. Four hundred dollars. A dangerous person who looks harmless is said to be a wolf in what, John? Stiletto pumps, sheep's clothing, gold lame cape, the touring company of cats. Answer is B, sheep's clothing. That's what it is, a wolf in sheep's clothing. 200, what is the term for a one-piece garment worn by paratroopers? Zoot suit, jumpsuit, seersucker suit, bikini. Well, they jump out of planes, so the answer is B, jumpsuit, final answer. Yes, sir, it's a jumpsuit, $200. John Wolf going for 300. A person described as a hayseed is most likely from where? City, country, suburbs, allergy town. The answer is B, country. That's where they say a hayseed is from, from the country. <laughs> Going for $500, which of these devices works by creating a partial vacuum against a surface? A glue gun, chalkboard eraser, Cellophane tape, suction cup. 
The answer is D, suction cup. Final answer. Yes, a suction cup. He's up to $1,000. Which of the following is the term for a Russian astronaut? A Bolshevik? A Dhaka? Cosmonaut? Cossack? We might be a Bolshevik, but the answer is C, cosmonaut. That's what they call him, a cosmonaut. Okay, John. Very good. We're going for $2,000. Take a look. In December 2000, what 128-year-old department store chain announced it was going out of business? Montgomery Ward, Walmart, Kmart, J.C. Penney. The answer is A, Montgomery Ward, final answer. Yes, it was Montgomery Ward, and what a shame, too. Here it comes for 4,000. On the TV series Baywatch, what color swimsuits do the lifeguards wear while on duty? White, black, red, green. You ever watch Baywatch? I've seen it in passing, and every time I've ever seen it, they're always in red swimsuits. So I'll say C, red, final answer. Good for you. You remember that one, didn't you, John? $4,000. For a guy who only watched it and waiting, you know, watched it momentarily. Good I memory. I flipped to the more yeah. esoteric thing. Red suits. $8,000, John. Which of these women's Olympic gymnastics events is performed to music? Vault, floor exercise, uneven bars, balance beam to music. The answer is B, floor exercise. Final answer. Very good. You got it for $8,000. $16,000 coming up, John. Which of these following countries used to be called Persia? Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Iran. The answer is D, Iran. Final answer. Yes, for $16,000. Hey, John Wilson. $32,000. John Wilkes, who reads meters for a living in Independence, Missouri, in the hot seat right now. You know, you're the third uh, person from Independence, Missouri, in that hot seat. That's what I was told. Yeah. Do you remember watching the show and seeing any? No, I must have missed the other yeah, two. Yeah, no, the two other people here. Yeah, you're the third one, which is kind of remarkable mm -hmm. for a small town. So let's see. Uh, uh, Kathy, how do you think he's doing? Doing great. All right, so John, here you go. You won sixteen thousand. Should you miss here, you lose fifteen grand. But we're going for thirty-two thousand. Very important. The best news of all. You've got three lifelines. Let's play. Thirty-two thousand dollars. What controversial subject was John T. Scopes charged with teaching in his classroom? Sex education, atheism, theory of evolution, communism. That was the monkey trial. And the answer is C, theory of evolution. Final answer. Just won $32,000. Just five away from the $2,050,000 right now. Here it comes for $64,000. In 2000, which of these authors released her 50th novel? Mary Higgins Clark. Danielle Steele, Judith Krantz, Jackie Collins. I don't have an idea in the world. No idea, huh? 50th uh, novel. Jackie Collins, I don't think she's written nearly that many novels. Danielle Steele probably is. Let's do the 50-50. Try to narrow it down, computer. Yeah. Take away two of those wrong ones, please. Mary Higgins Clark or Danielle Steele? I'm going to 
to say B, Daniel Steele. Final answer. Yes, for $64,000. Both of the prolific authors. Mm -hmm. All right, four away, two lifelines left. Coming up, $125,000 worth of question. A roadrunner is a member of what family of birds? Cuckoo, ostrich, thrush, pigeon. I'd like to phone a friend. Yeah? My friend, Bob Lapine. Bob, huh? what does he do? He works for the telephone company in the Southwestern Bell. He knows his he, birds. He knows his birds. Well, let's get Bob on the line, AT&T. Hello? Hello, Bob. Yes? you yeah, Regis Philbin calling from New York City. How you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Great. We've got John here, and he's going for $125,000. Kind of hung up on the question, so... He's going to give you the question and four possible answers, okay? Okay. All right, John, all yours, 30 seconds right now. A roadrunner is a member of what family of birds? Cuckoo, ostrich, thrush, pigeon. A roadrunner. Go over them again. Cuckoo, ostrich, thrush, pigeon. 15 seconds. Eight seconds. Uh, Give me a guess. I want to guess cuckoo. Oh, sure are you. Not sure at all. OK, thanks. Still could go to the audience. Yeah, let's do it. OK, audience, we need some help. For John, a roadrunner is a member of what family of birds? Cuckoo, ostrich, thrush, or pigeon? If you're ready. On your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, vote now. Sixty-five percent say ostrich. That's quite a majority. Seen this cartoon for years, eh? The mm -hmm. Roadrunner? Mm-hmm. No, I really don't think it's the ostrich, personally. I think it's either the cuckoo or the thrush, and I'm not sure enough to make a guess to risk that money. You I'm can gonna, walk with 64. I'm going to walk. You got to walk, huh? I'm going to walk with my Well, money. if you had to guess, what would you guess? I'd have guessed thrush. Thrush. Answer is cuckoo, believe uh, it or not. Right. It's all right. 64,000. Good money. Here you are, John. Nice meeting you. Good luck to you. Okay, buddy. Well... What's a contestant to do? Bob, the bird man, his phone a friend, got it right. The road runner is a cuckoo, not an ostrich, which is what the audience picked. But I liked uh, me to read it, John Wilkes, who takes home $64,000. Congratulations. All right, we've got to keep going now. Here's the next fastest finger question. Put these holiday movies in order of their first theatrical release, starting with the earliest. A Christmas Story, Groundhog Day, Halloween, Roman Holiday. Okay, everybody, time's up. Let's see that answer in the correct order. Starting with the earliest film, and it was Roman Holiday, and then Halloween, Christmas Story, finally, Groundhog Day. That's the right order. Who got it in the fastest time? Let's see. Winner is Greg Kidd. Yeah. for you. Greg Gibbs is going to try next to go all the way. What do you do, Greg? <laughs> Greg Gibbs from Duke Law School in Durham, North Carolina in our hot seat right now, and I guess mm -hmm. you're wrapping up your uh, education in law, right? I, uh, law school is three years long, and I'm in my final semester. Do you have a job? Yes. Actually, I do have a job lined up. Uh, I'll be coming here. I'll be coming to New York in September, uh, and I'll be working for one of the intellectual property firms here in town. Well, good for you. That's yeah, great. Thank you. And your wife, uh, Shannon, is back there, too. Hi, Shannon. How are you doing? Good. And what do you do? I'm a retail manager. Uh-huh. 
All right, fine. You ready to go to work here? Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. here we ready go, go. man. You know the rules. You know about the lifelines. You know how much money you're playing for. So let's do it, Greg. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. For $100, the person who is said to be blowing a gasket is doing what? Sneezing, falling asleep, getting angry, playing with dynamite. I like D, it's funny, but that's not the right answer. And I blow a gasket all the time. The answer is C, getting angry. And that's what you do when you blow a gasket, you get angry. $200 right now. Which of the following foods is usually part of a horse's diet? Pineapple, hay, grits, chili and sea bass. The answer is hay, B, hay. Yes, it is. It's hay. 300. A piece of clothing that has passed from an older sibling to a younger one is called what? Closet turnover. Wardrobe pass. Hand me down. Humiliating. <laughs> it is humiliating. Um, I was the oldest child. There was four of us, but all of my young siblings were all sisters. So the hand-me-down thing didn't work very well for our family, but the answer is C, hand-me-down. Yes, it's the right answer. You hand it on down. Okay, Greg, $500. Which of the following positions is not part of a basketball team? Center, forward, guard, defensive tackle. I don't, want to, I don't want to rub it in, but Duke's basketball team is a little bit better than your Notre Dame team. And I am aware of the fact that they don't have a defensive tackle. D, defensive tackle. Final answer? Final answer. Are you all through? <laughs> Can we go on with the game? You're right, okay, sure. sure. He's yes. right, defensive tackle for $500. <laughs> Up to 1000 What color is most closely associated with the recording artist Prince? Purple, blue, green, yellow. Purple rain. Uh, a purple, final answer. Yes, prints and purple, one of the same for a thousand. Good going, Greg. You got through those first five just fine. Here it is for 2,000 now. Which of the following is not considered the precious metal? Gold, silver, iron, platinum. The answer is C, iron. Final. Final answer. Yes, it's iron for $2,000. 4000 The leaf of a shamrock is most commonly divided into how many parts? Two, three, four, six. Well, if you find one with four, uh, you're lucky, and that's considered rather rare because it usually doesn't have that many. It usually has three. The answer is B, three. Want to make that your final answer? Well, I convinced myself with my reasoning, but now I'm not sure all of a sudden. Um, what are you not sure about? Um, well, I'm trying to picture a shamrock is really what it comes down to. You know, shamrock is associated with Notre Dame. <laughs> Are wouldn't you going to continue with this? Wouldn't it be funny if you didn't miss this one? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. All right. I don't wish you bad luck. You know that. What do you think? Well, I really do think it's B3. Final answer. Final answer. Yes, it's three, Greg. You got $4,000. Well, that sound means we're out of time for tonight, but Greg will be back here tomorrow night, and joining him will be 10 people who are arriving in the Big Apple right now. And they are Linda Palumbi, Heva Davila, Scott Stone, Debbie Lantry, Paul Pearson, Joyce Ziggarell, Jim Tosopoulos, Brett Beats, Scott Croyne, and Paul Herman. Hey, guess what? We're going on the road again. Starting soon, we'll be holding in-person auditions for our upcoming shows. You must be registered to audition. Phone registration for Chicago, Illinois, 
and New Orleans, Louisiana starts tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Central Time. Again, that's Friday night, 6 p.m. Central Time. Use the Touchstone phone and call toll-free 1-800-433-8321. We have room for 750 people per city. Phone lines close when maximum capacity for the additions is reached. So go to abc.com right now for more details. Prime Time Thursday coming up next on ABC, so stay right where you are. And we'll be back with Greg tomorrow night at 9, 8 Central, when he'll be playing for $2,060,000 from New York, everybody. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>